Someone's died. This is a day when we keep two things. Someone's got a bloody nose. Together that usually don't go together. Something happened. And that's called mourning and hope. That's what I know. That's what it is right now. Oh, and Debbie's stuff is arguing, and that's when I heard the whole crashing down, and like sound the whole side of the building is completely collapsed. So you had 51 points that you felt 51 were mishandled by police. Mm -hmm. Is it fun? Is that his cell phone? Yeah, they definitely down. There's no part of me that thinks that he would want to commit suicide. Yeah, she, 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 she's a Why do I have to come down here and tell you to do your job? Out of him. Like, I've never been through this before. But he was involved in a struggle. But this certainly doesn't like, guy. sound normal. Well, story time. I first met Scott in April on a wretched, gray, miserable day. It just kept raining and raining, flooding. I'm not New Orleans naive. These big cities, they're great until something bad happens. When something bad happens. You get a vision of the underside of what just infuriates people about it. The Donaldsons live in Hendersonville, North Carolina. This is Scott's third trip to meet with New Orleans police, the FBI, and the independent police monitor to get a full investigation into Seth's death. Why do I have to come down here and tell you to do your job? The Orleans Parish coroner ruled Seth's death a suicide. But the NOPD is taking the unusual step of taking another look at the case. Seth was with two friends from high school from back home in North Carolina the night that he died. We're calling them John and Kelly. Those aren't their real names because they're witnesses to a crime, not criminal suspects. Here's what happened. At 10 11 p.m., Seth took this picture with a close family friend while working at Grigri Restaurant. Shortly after, he spoke with Amy on the phone about his future. He started his countdown, 20 more days, 20 more days till I come home. 1.23 a.m., Seth gets a text from John, a high school friend from North Carolina saying, I'm waiting outside at the Chop Yard Bar. At approximately 2 a.m., Seth sends a picture to another North Carolina friend who asked not to be identified. The last thing that he sent to me on Snapchat was a um, picture of him taking a tab of acid and I, knew that he had never really done that. Three ten AM, John takes this video. Yeah, yeah, you know. Approximately five AM, Seth returns to the Saratoga Lofts building with John and Kelly. They were staying at an Airbnb. Like the whole crash. 6.02 a.m., Seth is pronounced dead. Let's pick it up there. You got 12.01, right? It's a Airbnb being rented by the female sitting on the ground right here, the gentleman sitting in the uh, lobby on the couch. This is footage from the body camera worn by New Orleans police officer Gabrielle Lewis. From their conversations, it's clear this is her first death investigation. Is this your first body? Yeah. If you feel like you gotta throw up, yeah. please Just over, do it over there. Okay. Not near the bar. Right, of course. She left the NOPD in February. That's Detective Marshall Scallon. He works in the 8th Police District. He is not a homicide detective. Until very recently, though, he handled the investigation into Seth's death. The NOPD blurred the faces of the witnesses before releasing this video to us. Scallon's report says John appeared to be on drugs with slurred speech. That is a good first spot. A lot of noise going on in the apartment, like running around, 
This witness tells police he heard arguing, he heard a crash, and he saw John downstairs. He was down here on the third floor, had some blood, saying this dude was on the plate, done some acid, he had hit him, he's got blood coming out of his nose. Yeah, let's get out of here. Up in the room, the body camera shows the shattered window, clothes all over the room, and a couch with a broken arm. Police find blood in the bathroom, trailing through the apartment and by the bed. The police report says they did not collect blood samples, but they did collect white powder on the coffee table. We know Seth had cocaine in his system, and even with that white powder on the coffee table in the middle of the room, Kelly tells police she didn't know Seth was doing drugs that night. He didn't even disclaim that he was on anything or anything at all. I, he just started freaking out. That's why I didn't know how to handle it. I, I didn't know if it was like a panic attack, and just like anxiety. Police didn't question Kelly about the drugs. The Donaldson's concern throughout all of this has been that they feel like John and Kelly aren't telling the whole story about what happened that night. John's been in trouble with the law before. He was arrested on marijuana distribution and possession charges. He pleaded guilty in two different states to lesser charges. He didn't want to talk to police in this case, but he did chime in occasionally when they were questioning Kelly, describing Seth having a bad acid trip. The, he was, I was laying on the bed, and then he was laying on the floor under here, and like he hops up, yeah, and he like jumps up, and he's like, no, 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 okay. no, and then he just comes and starts hitting me in the face. Okay. And then what happened after that? I just shoved him off of me, and then she calmed him down while I went to the bathroom. Kelly initially told police that later, Seth ran across the room and jumped out the window. That's what police wrote in their initial report. John corrects her during this interview. He catapulted, up. He catapulted himself off the couch through the window. Okay. I really wanted to do an interview with John and Kelly for this story, and I reached out to both of them. Kelly never responded. John did on Facebook Messenger, saying Seth punched through the window that night and then jumped through it. Please quit asking for information and let my friend rest in peace. Is that his cell phone? Yeah, the guy from downstairs. The phone, one of Amy's biggest problems with the investigation. She says investigators didn't care to look at it and that they essentially lost it. The initial police report says it went with the coroner, but this evidence log says otherwise. She asked Detective Scallon about it. Where is Seth's phone? I have no idea where Seth's phone is. It could be with the Airbnb. We have no idea. Why don't you have any idea where Seth's phone is? Finally, Amy got an answer, not from police, but a North Carolina woman Amy barely knew. She said she had the phone and that her son had gotten it from John. Nowadays, how do you not think about a phone being something to justify suicide versus homicide? The Donaldsons hired a digital expert to examine the phone after Scallon told them the NOPD didn't have the software to do it. That expert says the phone had no texting app, no search history, and no Snapchat on it. We know Seth used Snapchat that night. Remember, he messaged his friend. Sorry, it's kind of hard to talk about it. He had so much going for him. Like, he loved cooking. He loved life. He had tons of friends. Like, the boy could not go somewhere without making a new friend. He had more plans for himself. Did Seth Donaldson want to die? If it wasn't a homicide, that's the question investigators had to answer. The Donaldsons say they don't feel like anyone did. Their meeting with the Orleans coroner, Dwight McKenna, did not go well. We're just grieving parents. We want to know what happened. We want to know why you're calling this a suicide. McKenna just did not defuse the situation. He's just, he's a bully. He told us to let the dog and pony show begin. In Seth's case, McKenna isn't budging. You do your duty for your kid to get him through school. You know, you fight for your kid, and damn it, we're gonna fight for this kid when he can no longer speak for himself. Because that's what we did. Police only gave new life to the case because of Scott and Amy. Is my love for him gonna go away? Is my memory for him gonna go away? You know, and you don't want it to go away, so you kind of wonder, should I stay in this awful place forever? 
Even if they never know exactly what happened inside that room, the Donaldsons are determined to find out how Seth got out of it. How can you break through a window in a high rise 12 stories high? We'll have much more on that part of the story tomorrow night at 10 in the third part of my Shattered series. In the meantime, the NOPD's Public Integrity Bureau has an investigation into the handling of Seth's case after Amy filed a complaint with the Independent Police Monitor. The NOPD says a homicide detective reviewed the case and is filing another supplemental report that will then go to the Orleans Parish DA for review.